Hello everybody, I am Dr. D. Kavita, Assistant Professor, Department of Biochemistry, Biotechnology and Bioinformatics of National Government Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. Now you have chosen to study the module on the production of vitamin B12, citric acid, vinegar, riboflavin and xanthan gums. With the advances made in microbiology, recently food biotechnology is concerned with the improved quality, nutrition, consistency, color, safety and preservation of foods besides making them available around the year. Since the beginning of 20th century, technologies related to microbial production of biomolecules have matured to a great extent. Currently, microbes are used for commercial production of vitamins, organic acids, polysaccharides, etc. We shall look in detail about the production of vitamin B12, citric acid, vinegar, riboflavin and xanthan gums. After completing this module, the learner will be able to understand the production of vitamins, namely vitamin B12 and riboflavin and also to define the processes involved in the citric acid and vinegar production. And also you will be able to know the important type of microbial polysaccharide, namely xanthan gums. Let us discuss about vitamin B12. Vitamins defined as essential micronutrients are required in trace quantities. They cannot be synthesized by mammals but still essential for metabolism of all living organisms and are synthesized by microorganisms or plants. Apart from their in vivo nutritional physiological roles as growth factors for men, animals, plants and microorganisms, vitamins are now increasingly being introduced as food or feed additives. Coming to the occurrence, one of the most interesting and fascinating molecules in the world of science and medicine is vitamin B12 called as cobalamin. It was originally discovered as the anti-pernicious anemia factor in the early 1920s when it was demonstrated to cure pernicious anemia. In humans, the vitamin is required in trace amounts. Vitamin B12 is present in animal tissue at a very low concentration, for example, 1 ppm in the liver. It occurs mostly in the coenzyme forms, methylcobalamin and deoxyadenosylcobalamin. Isolation of vitamin B12 from animal tissues is very expensive and also tedious. Coming to the structure and the chemistry of vitamin B12, that is the cyanocobalamin, it is a water soluble vitamin with complex structure. The empirical formula of cyanocobalamin is C63H90N14O14 PCO. The structure of vitamin B12 consists of a corin ring with a central cobalt atom. The corin ring has four pyrrole units. Cobalt present at the center of the corin ring is bonded to the four pyrrole nitrogens and also the uh, binds to dimethyl benzimidazole and amino isopropanol. Thus, cobalt atom present in vitamin B12 is in a coordination state of 6. Now, we shall look into the biosynthesis of vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is the industrially produced stable cobalamin form which is not found in nature. Vitamin B12 is obtained exclusively by fermentation process. During the past two to three decades, several microorganisms have been employed for the efficient production of vitamin B12. The list of various microorganisms producing vitamin B12 and the respective yields are shown in the table. Most of the steps in the biosynthesis of vitamin B12 have been characterized in Pseudomonas denitrificans, Salmonella typhimurium and Propionibacterium fredenreichi. There are two different biosynthetic routes for vitamin B12 production, aerobic 
or more precisely an oxygen dependent pathway that is found in organisms like pseudomonas denitrificans and the other anaerobic oxygen independent pathway investigated in organisms like propionibacterium bacterium shermani, salmonella typhimurium and bacillus megatherium. An outline of the pathway is depicted in the figure. Many of the reactions in the synthesis of vitamin B12 are not yet fully understood. Vitamin B12 was first obtained as a byproduct of streptomyces fermentation during the production of certain antibiotics such as streptomycin, chloramphenicol or neomycin with the less yield. Later, high yielding strains were developed and at present, vitamin B12 is entirely produced by commercial fermentation and more than 10 tons of B12 are produced each year from a number of bacterial species. Let us see about the fermentative production of vitamin B12 using propionibacterium species. It has been demonstrated that propionibacteria species has the highest potential to accumulate vitamin B12 intracellularly. Propionibacterium shermani and propionibacterium fredenreichi are most widely used. Propionibacteria produce vitamin B12 intracellularly and excrete mainly propionic acid and acetic acid extracellularly. The process is carried out by adding cobalt in two phases. One, the anaerobic phase. This is a preliminary phase that may take two to four days. In the anaerobic phase, 5-deoxyadenosylcobinamide is predominantly produced. And the next aerobic phase, in this phase, 5-6-dimethylbenzimidazole is produced from riboflavin which gets incorporated to finally form coenzyme of vitamin B12 namely 5-deoxyadenosylcobalamin. In recent years, some fermentation technologists have successfully clubbed both anaerobic and as well as the aerobic phases to carry out the operation continuously in two reaction tanks. The bulk production of vitamin B12 is mostly done by submerged bacterial fermentation with bead molasses medium supplemented with cobalt chloride. The production of vitamin B12 using pseudomonas species also has a major role. Pseudomonas denitrificans is also used for large scale production of vitamin B12 in a cost effective manner. Starting with a low yield that's 0.6 mg per liter two decades ago, several improvements have been made in the strains of Pseudomonas denitrificans for a tremendous improvement in the yield that is 60 mg per liter. Addition of cobalt and 5,6 dimethyl benzimidazole to the medium is essential. The yield of vitamin B12 increases when the medium is supplemented with betaine, normally the source being sugar beet molasses. Now the culture is aerated during the whole fermentation process of about 2 to 3 days at 30 degrees centigrade and the pH values are maintained at 6 to 7. And now the recovery of vitamin B12 is the study of separation and purification processes of the fermentation products is most important for your commercial success. The cobalamins produced by fermentation are mostly bound to the cells. They can be solubilized by heat treatment at 80 to 120 degrees centigrade for about 30 minutes at pH 6.5 to 8.5. The solids and mycelium are filtered or centrifuged and the fermentation broth can be collected. The cobalamins can be converted to more stable cyanocobalamins. The vitamin solution is clarified subsequently by filtration, treatment with zinc chloride and then precipitated out by the addition of tannic acid or cresol to give the product of 80% purity which is suitable for use as animal food additive. For greater purity, which is required for pharmaceutical use, the clarified solution is extracted with organic solvents such as carbon tetrachloride and then with water and butanol, followed again by organic solvents. 
Pure vitamin B12 can be obtained by crystallization after the addition of organic solvents such as phenol and water. The steps in the downstream processing for the recovery of vitamin B12 are summarized in the figure. Next important vitamin is riboflavin. Riboflavin or vitamin B2, a water soluble vitamin is used for human nutrition and therapy and as an animal feed additive. Its deficiency in humans is correlated with loss of hair, inflammation of skin, uh, vision deterioration and growth failure. This vitamin has also been found to be successful in treatment of migraine and malaria. Riboflavin has been produced commercially by chemical synthesis, by fermentation and by a combination of fermentation and chemical synthesis. Recently, fermentation root has been widely used as it produces the vitamin in a single step resulting in substantial cost savings. Riboflavin exerts its biochemical functions through the coenzymes namely flavin adenine dinucleotide that is FAD and flavin mononucleotide that is FMN. Coming to the occurrence of riboflavin, it occurs in milk and milk products, meat, eggs, liver and kidney. While in milk and eggs, it is present in free form and in other foods, it is found in the form of flavoproteins that is coenzymes of riboflavin bound to proteins. Riboflavin contains 6,7-dimethyl isoaluxosin, a heterocyclic 3-ring structure attached to D-ribitol by a nitrogen atom. The isoaluxosin ring participates in the oxidation reduction reactions brought out by the coenzymes that is FAD and FMN. Now we shall look, in, look into the biosynthesis of riboflavin. Although bacteria that is Clostridium species and yeast that is Candida species are good producers to closely related ascomycete fungi, Erymothesium, Ashby and Asbiogossipi are considered the best riboflavin producers. Asbiogossipi produces 40,000 times more vitamin than it needs for its own growth. Ferrous ion inhibits riboflavin production by low and moderate overproducers such as Clostrida and Candida. The ability of Erymothesium asbi and Asbia gossipi to repress the effect of iron is responsible for overproduction of riboflavin. The biosynthetic pathway of riboflavin elucidated for the microorganisms Asbia gossipi and Erymothesium asbi is depicted in the figure. The two plant pathogens namely Asbia gossipi and Erymothesium asbi are most commonly employed due to high yield. Among these two organisms, Asbia uh, gossipi is preferred as it is more stable with a high producing capacity of riboflavin. High yielding strains of Asbia gossipi have been developed by genetic manipulations also. Let us see the fermentative production of riboflavin. Fermentative production of riboflavin is carried out in submerged culture. Industrial production of riboflavin is mostly carried out with the organism Asbia gossipi by using simple sugars such as glucose and corn strip liquid. Glucose can be replaced by sucrose or maltose for the supply of carbon source. In recent years, lipids such as corn oil when added to the medium for energy purpose have a profound influence on riboflavin production. Further, supplementation of the medium with yeast extract, peptones, glycine, inositol, purines and it is not pyrimidins also increase the yield of riboflavin. It is essential to carefully sterilize the medium for good yield of riboflavin. The initial pH of the culture medium is adjusted to around 6 to 7.5. The fermentation is conducted at temperature 26 to 28 degree centigrade. The process is carried out for about 5 to 7 days by submerged aerated fermentation. 
Riboflavin fermentation by Hermotism aspi is comparable to that described above for Asbio gossipi. Candida species can also produce riboflavin, but this fermentation process is extremely sensitive to the presence of iron. Consequently, iron or steel equipment cannot be used. Such equipments have to be lined with plastic material. Riboflavin biosynthesis was studied in Bacillus subtilis using classical genetics and RDNA technology. Improved strains for the production of riboflavin were constructed through metabolic engineering using recombinant DNA techniques in Cornibacterium ammonia gens. Coming to the stages of fermentation, some studies have been carried out to understand the process of fermentation of riboflavin particularly by Ascomycetes. It is now accepted that the fermentation occurs through three phases. Phase 1. This phase is characterized by rapid growth of the organism utilizing glucose. As pyruvic acid accumulates, pH becomes acidic. The growth of the organism stops as glucose gets exhausted. In phase 1, there is no production of riboflavin. In phase 2, the sporulation occurs in this phase and pyruvate concentration decreases. Simultaneously, there is an accumulation of ammonia which are due to the enhanced DMNAs activity makes the medium alkaline. Phase 2 is characterized by a maximal production of riboflavin. But this is mostly in the form of FAD and a small portion of it as FMN. In phase 3, that is the last phase, cells get disrupted by a process of autolysis. This allows release of FAD, FMN and free riboflavin into the medium. The last and important step in the production is recovery. Riboflavin is found in fermentation broth and in a bound form to the cells. The later can be released by heat treatment that is 120 degrees centigrade for about 1 hour. The cells can be discarded after filtration or centrifugation. The filtrate can be further purified and dried as per the requirements. Now let us move on to citric acid. Citric acid is the most important organic acid produced in tan age by fermentation. Citric acid is widely used to impart a pleasant tart flavor to foods and beverages. Let us discuss the history of citric acid. For the first time, Scheele in 1789 reported the isolation and crystallization of sour product from the lemon juice. Citric acid fermentation was also first observed as a fungal product by Wehmer in 1893 by a culture of Penicillium glaucum on sugar medium. After a few years, he isolated two new fungal strains with the ability to accumulate citric acid which were designated as Citromyces and also now it is called as Penicillium. We shall talk about the microbial production of citric acid. A large number of microorganisms including fungi and bacteria such as Orthobacter arafinans Bacillus lecheniformis and Cornibacterium species, Aspergillus niger, Aspergillus acleatus, Aspergillus arbonarius, Aspergillus armori, Aspergillus fetidus, Aspergillus phonix, and Penicillium gentinellum and yeast such as Candida tropicalis, Candida oleophila, Candida citroformans, Hansinula anemola, and Yarovia lipolitica have been employed for citric acid production. Most of them, however, are not able to produce commercially acceptable yields due to the fact that citric acid is a metabolite of energy metabolism and its accumulation rises in appreciable amounts only under conditions of drastic imbalances. Among the mentioned strains, the fungus Aspergillus niger has remained the organism of choice for commercial production because it produces more citric acid per time unit. The problem in the production of citric acid for yeast is the simultaneous formation of isocitric acid. The main advantages of using Aspergillus niger are its ease of handling, 
its ability to ferment a variety of cheap raw materials and high yields. Industrial strains which produce commercial citric acid are not freely available and only a few can be obtained from international culture collections. Citric acid production by fermentation can be divided in three phases which include preparation and inoculation of the raw material, fermentation and recovery of the product. We shall consider the commercial production methods. The industrial citric acid production can be carried in three different ways. One, the Koji fermentation process. Solid state fermentation, also known by Koji process, was first developed in Japan where abundant raw materials such as fruit paste and mainly rice bran are available. It is the simplest method for citric acid production and it has been an alternative method for using agro-industrial residues. Second, the surface fermentation. Liquid surface culture is the classic citric production process and was the first industrial manufacture. Submerged fermentation was developed only after that. Surface fermentation is still used in industries of small and medium scale because it requires less effort in operation, installation and energy cost. Third, the submerged fermentation. This is a technique widely used for citric acid production. It is estimated that about 80% of world production is obtained by submerged fermentation. This fermentation process employed in large scale requires more sophisticated installations and rigorous control. On the other hand, it presents several advantages such as higher productivity and yields, lower labor cost, lower contamination risk and labor consumption. Submerged fermentation can be carried out in batch, fed batch or continuous systems although the batch mode is more frequently used. Coming to the product recovery, the recovery of citric acid from fermented broth is generally performed through three procedures. Precipitation, extraction and adsorption. The first method is the most frequently used and it is applicable in all types of processes. The second one requires a fermented broth with little impurities. In both of the methods, there is the need to remove the fermented broth, mycelis of the fungus and materials in suspension by filtration. Next important microbial product is vinegar. Vinegar is a product of alcoholic and acetic fermentation by yeast and acetic acid bacteria. Vinegar is produced in a way much similar to wine. It is defined as a condiment made from sugary or starchy materials by an alcoholic fermentation followed by an acetous fermentation. It must contain not less than 4% acetic acid. Natural vinegar is a superior food additive over synthetic vinegar as it carries essential amino acids from its fruit sources and is reported to act as medicine for aches and gastric troubles. Now we shall consider the production of vinegar. Vinegar from fruits and malt liquor carry flavor characteristics of these materials. It is interesting that different countries have materials for vinegar production. For example, in Britain, malt wort is used whereas in France, grape must is used. Naturally, the production of vinegar depends on a mixed fermentation involving both yeast and acetic acid bacteria. Among the most important acetic acid bacteria, the strains of genus Acetobacter are mainly involved in vinegar production. It is considered as condiment composed of water, calories, carbohydrates, sugar, calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, acetic acid, tannins, polyphenols with medicinal and therapeutic values. Vinegar has been safe and healthful beverage. Fruit vinegars are made from fruit wines, usually without any additional flavoring agent. Fruits are prime crop in all over the world and its juice is a substrate of choice for natural vinegar because of its high sugar content and availability. 
the fruits are rich in vitamins and minerals etc so the vinegar produced from fruits is indirectly rich in vitamins and minerals the fermentation of vinegar is carried out in two successive stages one alcoholic fermentation at 30 degrees centigrade for 4 to 5 days and second acetic acid fermentation at 30 degrees centigrade for 10 days that is fermentation of vinegar is carried out in 15 days the organisms concerned in vinegar production usually grow at the top of the substrate to form jelly like mass and this mass is known as mother of vinegar the mother is composed of both acetobacter and yeast together let us move on to the methods of vinegar production historically several processes have been employed to make vinegar in the slow or natural process vats of cider are allowed to sit open at room temperature during a period of several months the fruit juices ferment into alcohol and then oxidize into acetic acid the french orleans process is also called the continuous method fruit juice is periodically added to small batches of vinegar and stored in a wooden barrels as the fresh juice source it is skimmed off the top both the slow and continuous methods require several months to produce vinegar in the modern commercial production of vinegar the generator method and the submerged fermentation method are employed these methods are based on the goal of infusing as much oxygen as possible into the alcohol product vinegar production results in very little by products or waste in fact the alcohol product is often the by product of other processes such as wine making and baker's yeast next is the microbial polysaccharide the microorganisms can produce large amounts of polysaccharide in the presence of surplus carbon source some of these polysaccharides like glycogen serve as storage compounds the polysaccharides excreted by the cells referred to as exopolysaccharides are of commercial importance the exopolysaccharides may be found in association with the cells or may remain in the medium the microbial polysaccharides may be neutral like dextrin scleroglucan or acidic like xanthan and gelin acidic polysaccharides possessing ionized groups such as carboxyl which can function as poly electrolytes are commercially more important the important microbial polysaccharide is xanthan xanthan gum derived its name from the strain of bacteria used during fermentation process that is xanthomonas campestris This bacteria form slimy substance which acts as a natural stabilizer. It is non-toxic, non-sensitizing and does not cause any skin and eye irritation. Xanthan gum produced by Xanthomonas campestris is widely studied because of its properties that allow it to be suitable alternative for other known natural and synthetic water soluble gums. Xanthomonas is the genus of Pseudomonas family. Coming to the chemistry of xanthan, it has a molecular weight in the range of 2 to 15 into 10 power 4 daltons. The basic repeating unit of xanthan is a pentasaccharide containing glucose, mannose and glucuronic acid with acetate and pyruvate. Basically, xanthan is a branched polymer with beta 1/4 linked glucan, that's a glucose polymer. backbone bound to a trisaccharide mannose and uh, glucose and mannose side chain on alternate glucose residues the mannose has either acetate or pyruvate groups the number of acetate or pyruvate molecules in xanthan is variable and is dependent on the bacterial strain used the culture conditions and the recovery processes also influence the quantities of pyruvate and acetate residues It is believed that the viscosity of xanthan gum is influenced by the contents of pyruvate and acetate. Talking about the applications of xanthan gum, it is used as a food additive for the preparation of soft foods such as ice cream and cheese. It is also used in oil industry for enhancing oil recovery. 
Further, xanthan is useful for the preparation of toothpaste and water-based paints too. For the biosynthesis of xanthan, the monomers are bound to a carrier lipid molecule and then transferred to a growing polymer chain. The activated monosaccharide nucleotides, example uridin diphosphate glucose that is UDP glucose, supply energy for the formation of glycosidic bonds between the adjacent units. The biosynthesis of other exopolysaccharides is comparable with that of xanthan. Let us see about the production of xanthan. Xanthan is commercially produced by the gram-negative bacterium Xanthomonas campestris. The culture medium usually consists of 4 to 5 percentage carbohydrate, 0.05 to 1.1 percentage nitrogen and salts. The pH is maintained around 7 and the fermentation is carried out by batch culture for 2 to 3 days. Xanthan in the culture broth is precipitated by isopropanol or methanol. These agents also kill the microorganisms. The precipitated xanthan can be dried and used for commercial purposes. Genetically engineered xanthomonas campestris have been developed which can utilize lactose for the production of xanthan. This is a good example of successfully converting a waste product into a commercially important and valuable product, a biopolymer namely xanthan gum. Now this module has presented the overview of the production of commercially important biomolecules by the fermentation of microbes. This module has outlined the different types of microorganisms and their products namely vitamin B12, riboflavin, citric acid, vinegar and xanthan. The wide applications of each of these products have also been described in this module.